Today, lesson 19b, solving two-step word problems with rational numbers. This is the third time that we have come to this topic of word problems where we have to use two-step or multi-step equations. The first time was with integers, then it was with positive and negative decimals. Now it is with positive and negative fractions. So that is our focus for today. And uh, last period, the lesson went very smoothly, very quickly, simply because there are similar types of word problems that we've seen before. It's just that now we have fractions involved. So everything that we do with the word problems that we dealt with earlier in the year, the same applies for today. So a little bit of background knowledge. We're looking for common words that lead to a, uh, certain expressions, like $25 per hour leads to 25x because we're looking for the number of hours, uh, looking for where it will be plus or minus. In this case, it's plus 50. And then we're typically looking for a total because usually that's what's on one side of our equation. And then this problem leads to this equation right here from there. We just do what we've done all year long, subtract or add in that first step, and then either multiply or divide in the second step. And then since it is a word problem, we do need to answer the question in words, not just x equals 5. But we've done enough of that that you should remember that. So let's take a look at number one. Number one goes like this. It rained a total of 10 inches in a week. The first day it rained six inches, then it rained two-thirds of an inch per day, or each day after that. How many more days did it rain for? Anybody have any idea what that equation might look like? Yes. There we go. Just like all these other word problems we've talked about this year. Two-thirds of an inch each day, that leads to two-thirds two x. In the first day it rained six, that leads to plus six. And then a total of ten inches leads to equals ten. I'm going to let you solve it from there. Number one. So we would need to subtract six from both sides. Do not skip steps. That leaves us with two-thirds x equals four. This is what we did a few days ago. At this point, we divide both sides by 2 thirds. We made our 1 right there. In other words, 2 thirds over 2 thirds is 1. So we know it's going to be x equals something. I need to figure out what 4 divided by 2 thirds is. A couple of you still writing things out of order for some reason. I'm not really sure why. We talked about the idea that it is top number. The top number is 4 divided by the bottom number. The bottom number is 2 thirds. So we have 4 divided by 2 thirds. We have to turn that into a multiplication problem. Do some cross dividing if we can and we can. So for this problem we end up with x equals 6, but we need to answer the question. The question is how many more days? So we would answer this something like uh, it would need to rain for 6 more days or something like that. Okay? So 6 more days. All right, let's take a look at number two. Everybody set it up and solve it. By the way, number two will not turn out even. That's okay. Sometimes we end up with the equations that give us a, a, an answer that's a whole number or an integer. Sometimes it's a mixed number or a decimal. That's okay. And that's what you're going to end up with in number two. All right, so our equation will turn into 2 fifths x plus 2 equals 15. From there, we need to subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me 2 fifths x equals 13. From there, I have to divide both sides by 2 fifths. I made my 1 right here. 2 fifths over 2 fifths is 1. Now I need to figure out what 13 divided by 2 fifths is. From there, turn it into a multiplication problem. Remember, it is top number divided by bottom number. So turning that into a multiplication problem, sometimes we can cross divide and sometimes we cannot. In this one, we cannot. So we end up with 65 over 2, but we need to convert that. And I asked you to do both a mixed number and a decimal. So that would be 32 and 1 half as a mixed number or 32.5 as a decimal. And I asked you to do both, but then we need to answer the uh, problem with words. How many pieces of ribbon was she given? She was given either 
32 and a half pieces of ribbon or 32.5 pieces of ribbon. Either one of those would be fine. Okay, let's turn our notes over to the back side. I would like you to finish off number three, four, and five. Do all three of them, please. And then we will compare what we have with our shoulder partner. We'll compare our equations we came up with and then what we got for our solution with words. Okay, I'll give you about three or four minutes. So we have a person who is uh, selling some candy. They weigh a half pound each in a box that weighs eight pounds, and the total weight of everything is 30 pounds. We're trying to figure out how many candies were in the box. So that leads us to an equation that looks like this. We, of course, subtract eight from both sides. That gives me one half x equals 22. We divide both sides by one half. We get our one right there, and then when we divide, 22 divided by one half, and we turn it into a multiplication problem, we end up with 44 candies altogether. When I walked around, that is what most of you got for that one. Number four, equation that we set up looks like this. 2 sevenths x plus 10 equals 24. We, of course, subtract 10 from both sides. We haven't talked about this in a long time, but that is the subtraction property of equality. We then divide both sides by 2 sevenths. That is the division property of equality. And now we just need to figure out what 14 divided by 2 sevenths is. That turns into 14 over 1 times 7 over 2. And uh, we can do a little bit of cross dividing there. And so we end up with 49 candles in the box. And then problem number five leads us to an equation that looks like this. 3 halves x plus 3 equals 9. We subtract 3 from both sides. We get 3 halves x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3 halves. And uh, we need to figure out what 6 divided by 3 halves is. That turns into 6 times 2 thirds. We can do a little bit of cross dividing, not much. But the question is, how many laps? Sonia can walk four laps. Any questions about any of those? We've done enough of that without fractions that just because there are fractions in there, that at this point it shouldn't change uh, basically what we are doing there. All right, we are finished for today.